Pooh Bear here and welcome to my channel and today we're going to be doing a couple of simple little things. One of the tests I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking this particular bit of audio, I'm actually going to push it up by nearly 770 dB or the peak I'm going to be pushing up that high and then I'm going to be bring it down again and I'm going to show you that it's not going to distort the signal or change the signal in any shape or form. I'm also going to be looking at a little bit of a CV overdriving and how we can actually use that to achieve what we're going to be doing today and this all came about because there's a video by Ryan and it's worth watching you've never seen it called levels and clipping but it's worth watching the whole of the video because um, it does appear uh, up on the forum from time to time and I don't know if people are not watching the whole video but they see the bit and they go hey we don't have to worry about the, the mixers and going into the red because that's not actually clipping blah 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 don't sweat it but you do have to sweat it what is going on with your master and more important what's going on with your big meter um, so if your big meter's clipping and this one isn't clipping you can see it's just coming up to just under zero db that would be i know it's zero but it's actually just under and hence it's not clipping now uh, the other thing the reason I, I always look at my big meter over my master meter is for the simple reason is there's a lot of times i've got i don't go from my master out to the hardware out i go off to another device and then i'll probably go off to the hardware out and if you do that the monitoring for clipping, so these little lights at the top here, and there's actually some little lights on here which you cannot see, will never light up. So in this particular circumstance, I've actually got my master going out via a simple spider. So I'm not even doing anything brilliantly. So when I push this up, I'm gonna push my clipping in. And as you can see, these lights at the top, they're not clipping, there's nothing there. There's nothing to tell it that there's actually any clipping. So if I was actually to scroll down a little bit, in fact, let's do it like this. Here we go, so I've got my spider here. I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna click delete, bomb. As soon as I click delete, you can see we've now got our clipping lights have come up. So if I was actually to say, hey, let's put that spider back in again, they've gone. So just bear that in mind that if you ever put anything on the outside, and when I'm talking about the outside, so if we quickly switch around to the back here, so this is the mask out. So a lot of the time, if I was um, say doing an export and I wanted to do some dithering, I would actually have this coming out of here, going into say something like the ozone maximizer or something. And I'd actually then do my dithering. My dithering would then go to my hardware out, which would be here. And the reason I do that is if, I've, you know, again, I've seen some people saying they're doing a diver inside the master section. If you do that, then you need to make sure that you never touch your master fader. Because if you're just coming through and then you're touching your master fader or more point you know, unity, it's going to mess up the order it's set all the bits up into. It's just going to mess up your data. So you have to do your dithering as the last thing going to the hardware out. Anyway, we're getting sidetracked already, but that's hey, that's me, isn't it? So the first thing we need to do is uh, prove how or how can we actually test to prove that there's going to be no distortion or anything else. And the simple test what we can do is a null test really. Let's be perfectly honest. So let me just zoom out a little bit. I'm just going to right click on this to start with and I'm just going to very, very quickly say create a parallel channel, very straightforward. And then I'm just going to scroll to the very top of here and I'm just going to invert the signal. That's all I've done. And if we scroll down, we can still hear a little bit of noise. And that must be because one of these is not, that wasn't at Unity, because I was messing around with it. So I've now just set that to Unity. That's set to Unity. And as you can see, we've got no signal at all. So for those who have never done an old test before, it's a simple case where you take your, your original signal, you invert it, and then you kind of sum them back together again. So you're adding them back together again. And if they're perfectly um, inverted and added back together, they're gonna to come out as zero. It's a bit like saying 10, and we invert that would be minus 10, so 10 minus 10 would be zero, 50 minus 50 is, is zero, or minus 75 plus 75 is gonna be zero. So we're looking to get that zero, which is our null test. And that's what we've got going on here. If I was to move one of these faders just a little bit, oh, sorry, they're both highlighted. Did you see that? That one of them was highlighted, so I'm gonna put that one back to Unity. There we go, we've got ourselves a signal. So it doesn't matter if you're pushing um, pushing it up or down, you're, you're always gonna get, uh, they're, they're basically not aligned anymore, so hence you can hear a signal coming through, but now here you can hear they're perfectly in sync. So what I'm gonna do here 
is actually just quickly build up a few devices so we can actually push this up into that near that 770 dB range and then we're going to bring it down. So first of all, I was going to quickly scroll out from this scroll. So I've got, I've got a zoom on a zoom. So it gets very, very confusing. Um, I'm actually going to leave that there for the moment. I'm going to take this other merge. I'm just going to put this merge in here. Um, I'm going to be doing some extra wiring purely because um, I'm going to be doing another test at the very end as well. So this will really sort of help things. And now what I'm gonna need is another mixer channel. So I'm gonna have another mixer channel here and let's put that into there. So that, that would do, cool. So this is my source. So I'm just gonna rename this to source. In fact, I think I spelled that incorrectly or not. And so this is gonna be an invert. So this is my invert signal. And this is gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this up, just call it up for now. So this is where I'm gonna push the signal up. I'm just gonna put sort of in this way around because I defer it. So I'm gonna come from my source, I'm gonna push the signal up by a uh, 770 dB. I can also in the same, obviously mixer channel, bring it back down again, but I'm not, I'm gonna go into another channel, mainly just to sort of prove you, you know, it has gone all the way up before we bring it all the way down again. And what we're gonna to do to actually push it up is uh, use a set of gain. So I'm going to use, push, use the set of gain to push that signal up, and I'm also going to use the set of gain to bring the signal down, and I'm going to be using this loudest meter as well to see some results. And the reason I'm using this loudest meter is because the set of gain, when you go over 100 dB, um, the display doesn't work anymore. It still works internally, or what everything it's doing, it just won't display it, mainly because who wants to go above 100 dB? Well, they hadn't met me at the time. So anyway, so, We've got this simple VST. Let me go and grab it from the other screen. There we go. I might quickly say stay on top. This is the figure watch we're going to be really, really interested in. Now, as you may or may not know, said so again, it's got this fader on it and you can obviously push, push things up. In fact, let me go and do something. That's just reminded me. Before I go any further, I'm just going to disconnect my output. So, because I'm going to be doing some silly things with the signals later on, I'm going to be doing a lot of distortion. That the last thing I want is uh, stuff coming out and actually um, affecting my my setup. So, if I was to take this and push this up to, obviously, I can push this up by 24 dB. Well, it's only 24 dB, which is not going to be enough at all. But we can do what's saying it's called CV overdriving, and I'm going to use what's called the RVL, and that's just a, w a way we can process signals. Uh, the only reason I like the RVL, sorry, I was waiting for this to scroll down. They didn't scroll down. And the only reason I like using the RVL is because we can be very specific with the values that we choose coming out of it. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this CV signal out and put it into the fader in. At the top, I'm going to take the same signal and put it into the fader in on this cell again, but this time I'm going to invert the signal. So this one's always going to be doing a, uh, a minus and this one's always going to be doing a plus. So let me put the word down on that channel. And this will start working. So let's give it a volt. And if we give it a volt, you notice straight away, we've gone up to 48. Um, now you might be wondering, why have we gone up to 48 on a single volt? Well, I think when this device was written, and it was written quite a while ago, you, you had your one volt range. And a lot of people, when you wanted to go into minus, so if you look at Thor, say Thor, uh, if I remember right, it goes from, his LFO is from minus 0.5 to plus, 0.5, whereas another lot of LFOs would actually go from minus one to plus one. So we have a one volt range, and if we wanted to go minus, really you went from half a volt to a plus half a volt, but then that sort of extended to a minus volt to a plus volt over time. And hence, if I was to push a whole volt through this, I'm virtually pushing a double, doubling that signal up, and hence I'm getting 48 and not 24. So let's put 0 0.5, 0 0.5 in, I get 24. Anyway, that's just a side little issue. But what I can do is I can actually double this figure up. As so I can double it up, you can see we've now just pushed way, way out of range. So that's stuck at 100. So we're gonna to have to come down to this value down here, which is a 143. So if I was now to overdrive it by 10 volts, plus them three, so that's 13 volts we're overdriving it. We're now up to 624 dB range. 
So I'm going to push this up a bit more and a bit more. And I think I can go one more. So if I click on that button there, we should be able to bring it in. There we go, 767. And more to the point, um, oops, let's bring that down. Let's see what we've got going on here. Uh, something's not quite right. And the reason he's saying it's not quite right because this here should not be showing anything. Oh, I know what's happened. Uh, what we need to do is take this out, this up, and I'm going to push this through my down signal now. Hey, hey. so this is so in a way this this display here is a bit broken. That's why it's flashing because it's 770 dB nearly. So it's, it's nearly broken. We get some funny results which are going on in here. We are then taking the signal which is coming out from this down really. So the source is going to be split, which is going into my inverted signal. We're then pushing the signal up, which is then coming into this down. We're now bringing the signal all the way back down again. And then we're going to merge these two results. So that's our null test. And here it is. Here is our null test, as you can see. So if I was to move this fader just a little bit, we will get some signal coming through. Now, the interesting thing is we can obviously um, come here and actually overdrive the signal even more. When we do, this meter here breaks. You can see it's now gone into, um, it's not actually displaying anymore because it doesn't know how to measure it because it's only 32 bit. And we've actually, we're, we're now crunching over the top. But you can see that we've actually got ourselves a signal coming through here. And in fact, that signal, if you actually go and listen to it, is going to be a very, very clear signal for the simple reason is we are, truncating this signal and then we're actually um, summing it with the inverted signal so the inverted signal is good this has been pushed way over and when it comes back down well it's not there we've actually we've we removed the data effectively and hence we'll hear the inverted signal so the more we overdrive these channels the clearer this channel will actually become and because the signal, let's have a quick look and make sure I can bring it down. Yeah, because the signal's nice and low, I'm quite happy to wire that up to my out. So I'm just going to quickly grab that there. Let's push that to the out. And as you're about to hear, the signal's okay. And as we actually bring this level down, So that's it going out, and let's actually push it up even slowly. And you can hear the distortion, and then it becomes clear. Now, because everything's working quite nicely, and I know it's working quite nicely, I'm gonna bring this down, and I'm gonna mute this one out. So now what we're gonna be hearing is the signal which is going, it's gone up the up and it's come down the down and should sound okay. Until we slowly start to drive it up. And this time as we drive it up, we're gonna to start to break it. So this has the opposite effect because it's not, it's now chopping itself off and we're just hearing the result because we're not actually um, inverting it and we're not trying to null anything out. So one way it makes the signal clearer and the other way, as you can hear, as we've gone higher and higher, we've absolutely killed that signal. Um, for the next quick test we're gonna actually do is we're gonna actually have a look um, at the physical chopping of the top. So I'm gonna actually use this um, VCO. Uh, I'm also gonna put it there. So this is just a straight oscillator. Let me hold the shift key down. As I create that, because I don't need a mix channel for that. And this is where I'm actually going to, um, I don't need the source, so I'm gonna now make this the source. There we go, that's now gonna be the source. So I'm gonna make sure that is muted out. It's not gonna matter, this should come through. All oh, that could be actually quite loud. I know what that's like. In fact, we'll have the inverted signal on as well.
Cool. So we've got that working. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to take this here. This is just a scope. And let's just quickly scroll down. He says it's not scrolling down fast enough for my liking. Let me just drop it there and try again. Cool. We're going to put the scope just below the down. And so let's going to quickly wire this into here. I'm then going to take the octave all the way down. And by taking the octave down, it just makes it a little bit easier to, to see this particular monitor. So if I was to click hold for start, this is the signal going through this system. As you can see, it's a nice, simple sine wave, really easy to see. And what we're going to do is we're then going to push this up. And so if I was to click on here, you can see we're going up to um, 767. Um, and we're going to push this over like we did before. And you'd see this would start becoming a square. In fact, that would do for the moment. So we've just gone over. So this is our lovely sine wave. This is where I've said we've run out of bits. So it really has lost it. With a limiter, when you say you've got a limiter, and you're going to say, hey, I'm going to limit my um, signal because I don't want you to go above, say, zero dB. The nice thing about them limiters is they've got like look ahead. So it doesn't matter the fact that your signal is going above. It can look ahead and it can and they usually have algorithms built into it to say, how are we going to manage that signal? Are we going to just cut it off dead? Or are we going to try and shape it somehow? Are we going to try and ma manipulate that data a little bit more so it's not just that hard, 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 hard hit? You know, so that's the different algorithms. And you see that again inside um, isotopes, uh, ozone, when you look at their maximizers, they have their different types, which you can actually set. This is slightly different because you've physically run out of numbers. There is no way you can calculate what's happening above because there's no physical way you can ever go above. Um, so it's lost forever, ever, 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 and ever. Um, as I say, this is pure digital clipping. So if you want to do pure digital clipping, this is one way you can do it, by pushing it up and bringing it back down again, and there you go. You've got pure digital clipping. Anyway. I could go on and on and on about this sort of stuff, but I think I've done enough. So in this demonstration, we're just showing that we can take a, a signal. We can go way, way, way above zero dB and we can bring it back down again and it doesn't distort at all. Key, key, key thing though is keep an eye on your big meters or if you know you're going from your master direct to your output, then fine, you could monitor that. But I'd still say get into the habit of using your big meters when you're looking at these sort of thing, put it into a peak mode. Um, do watch that video if you haven't seen it by right. It is a great video. But as I say, there is that bit in there and they do, they do mention it. They all mention this, what we're talking about. But it just seems like it's because it's such a small bit, I suppose, with so much more data going on, it's so easy to miss. Um, and hopefully you may have learned a little bit about CV overdriving where we can take a signal and like the silly gain there, we took this signal and we've pushed it right up. You, you're gonna get little funnies like this, like things will flash, things will flash like this because we're dealing with a signal which it, it wasn't designed to deal with. So, and we've gone out of scope. So it's gone way, way out over its number calculations. So they're all getting a bit confusing of what's really going on or not going on. Anyway, I am definitely waffling now, so I also want to say thank you for watching and bye for now.